case that's um that's not exactly road test weather but the show must go on i mean what could we possibly use in the middle of storm babbitt we have got red weather alerts for rainfall in scotland today I mean, what could we possibly use i think we may just have the car in fact i think we may actually have the perfect car which you may well just see over my shoulder yes ladies and gentlemen we have an audi s4 this week um and it's a diesel but it's a diesel with 350 horsepower thanks to the quattro all-wheel drive that goes to every single corner so it should be a rather formidable beast in this lovely lovely rainy windy uh, soaking wet scottish october morning let's get a wee nosy around this color um, is probably one of the car's standout features it was originally uh, an audi r8 only color it's camoa gray um, and it's it's got a little bit of peril through it uh, it's not solid so it's not like your nardo gray it's more like a kind of nano grey with a hint of blue and I think it's rather fetching but one thing about the S4 um, and I'm sure you guys will uh, agree is it's always been the Q car of the sort of hot-ish performance uh, saloon and estate segment take the extra pipes off the back and that um, in all intents purposes could be a 2 litre TDI S line. Um, we recently just sold a petrol one. Um, so it'd be quite good to get a back to back to see um, what the diesel derivative compares with, uh, compares like with the, 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 uh, the, the petrol. Uh, I've also just bought um, myself a Julian M340D, which on paper should be the kind of toe to toe um, competitor, if you like, uh, with the S4. Uh, they're around about 340 horsepower, in fact this is 350. Um, both got four-wheel drives and they're both similar size, so it'll be very, very interesting to see what they compare. Uh, as I've just finished a rather long drive back from Brighton uh, in the 340. But I've got to say, I think the Audi's interiors at the minute are really, really, really on point. Uh, especially these diamond-stitched hard back seats with the Integral Headrest. Uh, one thing about S, S, S4s and S5s so far we've seen is they all appear to have massaging seats as standard. Uh, your multi-weight lumbar adjustment uh, and this one's also got the extended light package with the wee projector lamp there and illuminated entry plate. A um, couple other things on this car, it's got like matrix, sorry it doesn't have matrix headlights, it's comfort and sound pack, sound view camera, Bang off an audio and a tech pack. Um, but, 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 as we know, that's not what these videos are all about. I'm not trying to sell you the car. Be, it would be rather nice if you did. Um, it's about how they drive. So, we're definitely not going to be doing any fancy drone shots today because literally it is blowing a gale and, um, and I don't think the drone is waterproof to that extent either. So, um, we'll get everything all um, sorted on, sorted on, and sorry, we'll get everything all mounted on the car. And um, we'll go out and see what it drives like. But first, we must do a cold start. Cold start on a diesel, you say? Yes. Let me let, you, let me let you get a listen uh, to this rather fruity diesel. A cold start in a diesel, you say? Right. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh no! This has got a ghost. get me every time. Right, she's now running. Let's see what she sounds like right after all. Yeah. Um, it's certainly got a bit of character. Not entirely sure I'm really feeling the character. These Audis have got an active exhaust. Essentially they've got a speaker in the exhaust to give a synthesised engine noise and I think it's rubbish. I just don't think it's needed. It's a six cylinder diesel. They sound okay anyway. What do you guys think? I would be very, very interested to know in the comments if you could let me know. But 
It makes it sound like an HGV lorry. It's just <laughs> it's not needed. Anyway, cool start done. Let's get out and brave the weather. Welcome to a rather wet and windy road test. I think this is pretty much the perfect stomping ground for a four-wheel drive, 350 brake horsepower Audi S4. Now, can you imagine winding the clock back and telling Audi aficionados, yeah, yeah, the hot diesel, sorry, the hot Audi A4, the S4, is going to be a diesel. Pfft, they would laugh you out of the park. But then, fast forward 10 years, and this is what it does from a standstill. Now, there's not going to be a huge amount of noise in here, but I can confirm that is an immense shove into the seat, of which is a really, really nice seat to be shoved into. But we know it's going to be quick. It's 350 horsepower. It's got something obscene in the torque figures as well. I don't recall. It'll be on the internet somewhere. But it's how it delivers its power. If you guys have followed the channel for any length of time, you will know that I do always lean more towards the Audi camp. Sorry. <laughs> Audi in the head today because I'm in one. I'm more, I'm more in the BMW camp. I just think that they steer nicer. Uh, I've always felt that the gearboxes are nicer. I think the engines, especially the, the, the diesels, deliver their power in a, in a nicer fashion. But I'll tell you what, I haven't done many miles in this S4 diesel and already they've definitely closed the gap. First and foremost is the steering. I mean, we've got, sometimes I feel that, yeah, Audi steering can't always be a bit wooden um, and there'll be videos all over the internet confirming that but in this it's actually really really nice when you start to turn in the steering actually does weight up to let you know that the front wheels are beginning to do something but they're beginning to build up grip the steering wheel itself is absolutely on point the older shape 3 series was my favourite wheel at the time they've now gone for a bigger thicker spoke and it just feels a bit clumsy this is essentially a, an Audi version of that old wheel that you got in an F Series 3. It's really, really nice and delicate in the hands. It's got this lovely perforated leather section where you're uh, between the sort of 10 to 22 and, and um, what would that be? Uh, 20 past six, 20 past five, 20 past six. But, uh, you know, it just feels dead nice. The paddles, as much as they are more like buttons than paddles, they've got a nice feel to them. Uh, the M340D that we've just recently bought has got a nicer paddle, it, it feels more like a quality item, it's polished in the back and brushed on the front, um, it's got a nicer kind of actuation to it, but that being said, these do operate the gearbox in a nice quick fashion, um, the dash layout, and we've got the virtual cockpit, this has got the comfort and sound pack, which um, I'm pretty sure has got like Bang off and audio system which is mega. Uh, I'm not quite sure where the comfort part comes in right enough because these are pretty comfy anyway, unless it's something to do with the massage seats. But every S4 and S5 we've ever had appears to come with massage seats. I don't know, maybe Audi S4 and S5 drivers just like massage seats and always factor them in when they're configuring their build spec. However, it's a nice to have. Um, in fact, I think we'll put them on for the duration of the test drive. Um, so back to the back to how the car drives. We've got it in in the drive select mode. I've just left it in automatic. Just let let it do its own thing. Uh, it's not the sort of day where we're going to be doing anything too da too daft anyway. Got a nice wee country road coming up. Down in the second gear. In fact, I'm going to turn that massage off because it really does it really does do its thing. Right, guys, so then I'm just going to pull over and. Not that we'll be flying that today. Okay, one drone secured. Back to driving. So we'll leave it in manual. See, see what the changes are like when they're on, on demand. Now this is probably not going to be as skittish as the the supercharged M3 last week in three degrees on cut slick, so it should still give us a good idea of what the car's like both ends. Let's see a wee bit. 
I mean, I'm, the amount of throttle input that I'm having to give this car is tiny. Majorly agile. I mean, the, the turn of direction there at the front end was just epic. I mean, that's a pretty tight left right there. It's riding these bumps unbelievably well. In fact, if I didn't know any better, I would have thought this was on like, remember the old DRC system, which was epic for ironing out all the road imperfections, but yet it still meant the car could handle. Like strong brakes, which is nice. Loads of power on the way out, get that four-wheel drive working, you can just feel the front tyres beginning to send you a wee bit of unhappiness through the wheel. Which is nice, actually feedback. Well done Audi, we've got feedback through the front wheels. Loads of leaves blown off the trees here, so we'll just scrub off a wee bit of speed. Don't want to be taking too many risks. I mean, even although this car's got the active exhaust system on it, it's not really making that much noise, but the trade-off for having the S4, a diesel, not mentioning, not, you know, not forgetting the, the unbelievable torque and all the rest of it, is fuel economy. The, the gentleman that we bought the car off, hi Ian if you're watching, um, was getting 41 miles to the gallon with it on a mixture of driving. Don't think the old s is going to do that. This is really, really, really good. I mean, you're just literally, you're not bothering about revving out, you're just riding the, the torque and just keep chopping the cogs and keep them in the sweet spot. Which you can lose, it's nice to rev a car out, but at the same time, the throttle response means that you get that much power from, put this way, I don't even have the rev counter on. I've got, I've got the sat nav feature in the middle of the dash, so we'll fix that in a minute. Uh, yes, so we've now got um, a kind of graph style rev counter, red line in at five, we're never going to be as far up the revs as that, but that's better. But it just shows how little it matters where you are in the revs to get performance from this thing. It just goes wherever, wherever, wherever the fancy takes you. Would you think you would go out for a really good back road blast in an Audi diesel? Yes, you would. <laughs> and you would do it in this. This handles so well. There's so much that comes as a surprise with this car, namely the ride and the steering. Uh, you know, brakes generally are always good nowadays, gearbox are generally always good nowadays, performance was never in question, because we've had super fast Audis in the past, and I'm sorry guys, that it's not all about performance, it's not all about how quickly you can go from 0 to 60, or in gear acceleration, as much as it's nice and it passes the time and it can be uh, entertaining, you get bored of out and out performance straight away. You know, uh, easily attainable performance. You, it doesn't hold your attention. Throttle response and steering feel and how tactile it is and how nice it is down your, your country road and how nice it sounds, sadly, but that's not going to be a factor in this road test, but all that other stuff, that's what makes you want to go out and drive down that nice road because of how when you lean into the corner, it feels secure and it makes you feel connected. And this is doing that. Yeah. Wow, what a car. What a car. I would, mm, okay, so a, a favourite of mine in, in this particular, in this, this particular market segment has been a 335 diesel. Um, is it better than one of those? I mean, it should be. It's 50, 50 odd grand it was new. You know, so it's got an awful, it's got a price tag to live up to. And uh, I suppose the, the, the fair test would be not, oops, the fair test in this 
would not be the old 335 because it's a different price range it's, it's a different generation I suppose I've got to compare it with the M340D which I've literally just bought for myself albeit it's an estate car but what would I rather have on the driving front <laughs> I'm not joking it's, it's, it's really really close really close I'm trying to miss that big pothole there didn't do a very good job oh I can't leave back to you on that give me a few more miles <sighs> the drivetrain in the BMW is still better because what I've noticed in this is if you if you come off the throttle and put the foot straight down there's lag and there's once you tune in on that it's quite noticeable and I haven't noticed that on the M340D um, I think the M340D sounds better um, it doesn't have a, an exhaust thingy speaker for one it just does it all organically which I've, I, I would always pick um, ooh it's a big branch I did say there was a storm thankfully no damage wasn't ready for that. Oh well, that'll stop someone else from driving into it. <laughs> anyway, onwards and alongwards. Yeah, so the, I think the drivetrain in the M340D is still is still better. It is marginal. It really, really is. It's not. It's, you know, the, the gap between a fast Audi and a fast uh, BMW moving forward from the last generation to this is definitely smaller but where this car has improved massively over the last fast Audi I had a chance to drive is the steering and handling and how it rides Audis generally for me ride far too stiff you don't let the car you don't let the car load up and turn in nice at the front you've really just got to go purely on faith at the front end has got the grip that you hope. Um, I mean, at one point in this, I could actually feel the, a little bit of understeer coming in and we were sending it on a wee bit. But that came as quite a pleasant surprise to know that that information is there as and when you really need it. Um, the steering wheel is absolutely beautiful. This interior is gorgeous. The seats are mega. Um, so, yeah. Would I have one over, over an M340D? Before, it wouldn't even be a consideration. Now, if I, if I had the two cars side by side and the Audi had a, a nicer spec, I would probably give the Audi a wee go. I would, actually. If they were both identical, both price, both about the same price, both about the same mileage, both had the same kit in them, I would, me personally, I would still go for the M340D, but it's more down to what my own personal preference is. I wouldn't be disappointed with either of the two. I really, really wouldn't. Um, yeah, wow, Audi, what a car. What a massive, massive surprise in areas that I didn't think that Audi would excel in. So, there we are, guys. I am now going to go out and get soaking wet, try and do some B-roll, hope my drone doesn't die. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, I would be very, very grateful if you could give the channel a subscribe. Um, we put one of these videos out a week and it can be anything last week it was a supercharged E46 M3 which you can find on the channel um, who knows what it's going to be next week this week it's been this phenomenal fast diesel Audi and um, I shall see you next week off to get wet